whatever existential threat we're facing, Godzilla can kind of reflect that back at us. Godzilla has such a long legacy. What was the most important thing that you wanted to preserve in Monarch? I don't know that there were things from the the films or the legacy of the MonsterVerse that we felt were things we needed to hang on to, other than obviously honoring, you know, the heritage of these characters. But the most important thing for us to preserve was this connection of the of the family through the generations, you know, that we created a group of characters who were there at the formation of Monarch in our timeline, that as the storyline flashes back and forth between these two timelines, you see the continuum that brought the history of Monarch through the Randa family from its formation in the past up to the present day. You know, it is that kind of generational trauma cascades, like Godzilla is the lens for that, right? Like like that, there's a sort of totemic power in what God, what are we afraid of now? Right. What is Godzilla speaking to now? We were developing the show in the middle of a global pandemic. And we have a show about people have been through this this giant event where the world is entirely different on the other side of it. We're in a similar moment now. Um, you know, Godzilla remains relevant uh, uh, across decades of, of screen. You know, whatever it is we're worried about, whatever it is we're, we're, we're nervous about, whatever existential threat we're facing, you know, Godzilla can kind of reflect that back at us. All right. A lot of people want to talk about the monsters, but this family drama is intense. Was the casting difficult? I I don't know that casting was particularly difficult. Finding the perfect people is is always a process, um, and it can be an extraordinarily gratifying process when you you know when when you when you when you suddenly it clicks and you bring the groups together. And, and w- what was fun about it was we have two core groups and two separate timelines. You know, we have Kate and Kentaro and May with Shaw in the present. And then we have, you know, Billy Randa and Keiko and Lee in the, in the past. And that you really saw the bond between those two groups, not just on screen in the characters, but behind the screen and the actors, those, those actors all really got along and they became, this is our team. Mm-hmm. And we were just honestly just blessed to have such fantastic actors, you know, in all the parts. Did you always know that you wanted the the Russell family involved? No, you know, we, we knew that Shaw was the linchpin character that kind of connected the two storylines. It wasn't written for Kurt and Wyatt, but our, our, our brilliant casting director, Ronna Kress, suggested, you know, hey, they're, Kurt and Wyatt have been looking for a project to do together. And they had never been pitched something where they weren't father and son. Necessarily. You know, they had never been pitched playing the same guy. Uh, so I think it, it it gave them a creative challenge and it gave us just the gift of of getting to to write into that and and telling the story of how Lee becomes Shaw and how Shaw remembers what it was like to be Lee. And then to get to watch Kurt and Kurt and Wyatt started from that and built that performance, built that character together from both ends. Last question. Are we going to visit Planet X this season? I'm looking at you. I don't know. Not uh, no. no uh, 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 we're going to visit a lot of places. Let's say that we're going to do a <laughs> lot, a lot, a lot of places. Some of which you haven't seen before in the MonsterVerse. Wyoming, um, <laughs> no Kansas. Yes, Kansas. Right, actual Kansas. We do actually go to Kansas. Oh, spoilers. Yeah. So we were setting up different time periods. We were jumping around different continents. We were shooting in Tokyo. We were shooting in the jungles of Hawaii. So just from a filmmaking standpoint, it was an incredible adventure. But, you know, for us, it was really about setting a language that this was going to be a show about the human experience of a monster universe, that we weren't going to be up in the stratosphere with Godzilla battling King Kong. We were going to be down on the ground with the people experiencing it and how those experiences affected their lives and changed everything for them. And so, you know, that was what it was about, was about sort of figuring out how to tell that multi-generational drama and mystery. Now, WandaVision, The Consultant, and now Monarch all jump around in time, like you mentioned. Is that a prerequisite? Like, if there's no time jumping, you're not doing it? No, definitely not. Um, (laughs) You know, uh, it might be better for my own sanity to just stay in one time period. Now, we meet several monsters in the first episode, but there's some created for the show. I know you can't tell me about all of them, but What was that like also shooting this human story, but then you also have to think about scale for these monsters? 
you know, it was fun because we were getting to work with classic monsters like Godzilla and others, and also to create our own and to look at the natural world and crazy bugs and insects that are out there and fish and and uh, stuff at the bottom of the sea that ter- that that will that's terrifying enough on its own. And then you're like, oh, what would that look like? It's a giant monster, and that's a great creative process. But I think the scale of it um, becomes so much more awesome and full of wonder because you're seeing it from the human point of view and you have all this layer of reality in the foreground all of this human drama and people that hopefully you're invested in and you're rooting for and you're worried about and then that giant monster behind them becomes so much more real because you're invested in everything that's happening right in front of you i was an artist on godzilla 2014 and then i helped supervise a scene in uh king of the monsters so i've, I've been loosely involved with this for a while but yeah first time on the production side working on it from the start of the show are there visual effects that like even back almost a decade that you see have laid the groundwork for what's in monarch absolutely you know we had this technique that we used to funnily enough that we used to call like the iphone test of you know if if we would shrink the image down on our monitors to the size of an iphone and if we looked at it and we could see could understand what was going on we knew that it was a strong composition and then you could go back out and start working on the whole frame. And so a lot of that, like a lot of that translates into how do you add scale to Godzilla? You know, you use atmospherics and things to give shape to him, use like lights in specific ways to like shape him. Was your team allowed to sort of update any of Godzilla's power set or change how they were realized? We're trying to be true to um, what happened in the films, right? So 2014, you know, there's like, there's a way he moves and the, and the power set that he has. And then King of the Monsters, you know, his spines have changed because of the damage that happened in 2014. And so you have to stay true to those things. The power sets are things that happened in the films. And so you, you need to play within that sandbox. Um, the things that we could do are like, you know, there's a shot where we really get up close and personal in the dorsal fins, his big spines along his back. And so we added like a lot more, the, the vendor who worked on that, uh, Rising Sun Pictures, they did a, a great job of like detailing all this stuff, adding like rocks and other bits of debris in there and really bringing scale and, and, and size to something that we'd seen, but just never had seen in that level of detail. Got you. Now, real quick about the monsters. Uh, I recognize Mother Longlegs, but then I see we have Mantle Claw and Endoswarmer that we met in the first episode. How many new monsters are we going to meet? And did you get to name any of them? I, I didn't get to name them. And I don't want to spoil how many monsters there are because, you know, we make some monsters and then they come back in later episodes. But um, yeah, I mean, like working on new monsters is is great fun. Like it's also hard, but it's like great fun, you know, like the the process was like you know there might be something in the script like a star nose mole crossed with a pangolin for example uh you know and then you go and you start working with concept artists and developing that stuff out and sometimes it's more like you have a situation and you need a thing to happen and so what could this monster be um there's so many freaky things at the bottom of the ocean and that like really became a great inspiration for us to to drive new ideas and new monsters we really wanted to preserve the sort of the iconic nature of Godzilla. I think that, you know, we talk a lot about the fact that, that people that aren't familiar with the IP sort of assume that Godzilla is a bad guy. And, and I think that what's so interesting about Godzilla is that he, you know, you wouldn't want him to be in your backyard. He would, you know, he's destructive. We, we acknowledge that. But he's also someone that preserves humanity by tackling other titans. And he's always been a representative of, you know, of different human challenges from nuclear power. We've joked through the development of this that he represented global warming and then COVID. And, you know, has always been sort of manifest of, of some sort of um, existential crisis that humans are facing. And I think that we wanted to preserve that sense of the reverence that humans have for him. There's obviously there's fear and but there's but there's also, you know, at the end of the day, there's just a, um, an on wonder that I think comes with Godzilla. Do you feel that this series is more for like the hardcore classic Godzilla fan or for newbies? I think it's a really nice balance of both. I think what's what's great is, you know, we're we're looking at Monarch, which is this organization that in the films you see um, really in the background of the early movies and then by the more recent films is a really prominent organization. And our show looks at how do they get there? Who are the, who who birthed this organization? So any new viewer is coming at the ground floor and learning about how this came to be. 
but also at the heart of it, they're learning about this, this family we've never seen in any part of the, of the MonsterVerse um, and learning about their very specific family juicy drama that I think has been something that some people come for Godzilla and they stay for these characters. And that's been really exciting to see. Um, but the show is for everyone. It's a globe trotting adventure. It has a lot of romance, love triangles, human betrayals, hopes, dreams, all the things that make good TV.